Hey everyone, I'm Paul and today I'm reviewing the Carparide Wireless Car Stereo. This is a 7 inch touchscreen unit that's designed to add Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to your existing car stereo. It connects to the phone through Bluetooth, then sends the audio signal through a headphone cable to the aux input in your car. Don't have an aux input? That's okay. This has an FM modulator. You don't have a car stereo? That's fine too. There's a little speaker right there. The unit I'm reviewing today is called the W708 Wireless Portable Car Stereo. It has a 7 inch touchscreen display and works with Apple iPhone and Android phones. You can use your voice to control navigation and it works with Siri too. This unit has built in Wi Fi for the CarPlay connection and Bluetooth 5.0. The screen can dim automatically at night. It has a built-in speaker, FM modulator, and an auxiliary output. It has an equalizer to make adjustments to your audio, and the display is really good. It has lots of pixels, but more importantly, it doesn't have any glare, and you can see it just fine, even on a bright sunny day. I'll be testing this unit on two different cars. The first car is a 2017 Hyundai Tucson. This stereo comes with a few mounting options. For the Hyundai, I chose the suction cup on the windshield. It's very sturdy. They cheated a bit and used an adhesive on the suction cup. It sticks to the glass really well, so make sure you install it in the right place. Next, install the adjustable mounting arm. The long bolt goes through it and you can adjust the angle up and down. The mounting plate clips into the back of the stereo like this. If you have a lot of crackheads in your city, the easiest way to remove it to prevent theft is pull out the big bolt and take the radio with you. Plug in the 12 volt connector on the left side to provide power. For good quality audio, plug the aux cable into the headphone jack output and connect it to the aux input if your car has it. This radio has Bluetooth, but you can connect your phone directly to the USB port for the best sound quality and to charge your phone. In this example, I have two wires running up to the radio. This is how your car will look if you're lazy. You can hide the wires if you want it to look better. Touch the house icon on the lower left corner of the screen to get to the home screen. If you have an iPhone, select the green iPlay button. To connect the first time, make sure your phone Bluetooth is on and discoverable. Select Car Paride and hit Pair. You can sync your contacts if you want to use the car stereo for phone calls and text messages. Next, say yes to using CarPlay. From the home screen, you have 10 options. Settings lets you adjust things and turn the built-in speaker on and off. This unit also has a built-in FM transmitter to connect to older radios that don't have an auxiliary input. Card allows you to play music that you saved on an SD card. USB allows you to play music from a USB thumb drive. You can adjust the equalizer to get the perfect sound from your car stereo. Auto link is for screen mirroring. This allows you to use the display the same way as your phone instead of being limited to a few car apps. AirPlay is for connecting your phone over Wi-Fi. And of course they included Android Auto if you're not one of those iPhone people. Let's try out Google Maps navigation. You can navigate full screen or split the screen with music on the right. Very cool. The microphone button on the bottom is for Siri. Gas station. Looks like Siri doesn't want to help me. Select search at the top of the screen, then the microphone in the upper right corner. Gas station. This time I asked Google Maps, not Siri, to find me a gas station. East toward East 3435 South Street, East Evergreen Avenue. And just like that, I'm ready to drive. But first, I need some music. I have YouTube Music installed on my phone, so that app shows up just under Google Maps on the left side of the screen. And here I can see playlists that YouTube recommends for me. The touchscreen is responsive, and scrolling up and down feels just like my phone. Okay, and we have music. One little quirk I found is the app on the stereo doesn't allow you to search YouTube music for a song, but I can still do that on my phone. Here we go. Let's play one of these no copyright songs. I also noticed I can't scrub through the track using the stereo, but the track forward and back buttons work just fine. The stock Hyundai stereo lets me move through the song using the touchscreen, and this does not. 
If I want to jump to a certain part of the song, I can still do that on my phone. I can adjust the volume of the music using the steering wheel buttons, but track forward and back don't work because the car is only receiving audio and can't control the track in aux input mode. This system works great in the 2017 Hyundai Tucson. Of course, it's only sending audio to the car stereo through this auxiliary cable, so I don't have control over the track using the steering wheel. That's not a big deal. This car already has Bluetooth, and I can already plug my phone directly into the stereo. So actually, if I just got a phone mount and put my phone right here, I don't need this thing. The screen is bigger than my phone, so if you use navigation a lot, that could still be useful. Perhaps there is more to gain by installing it in an older car. The second car I'm testing this radio in is my 1997 Toyota RAV4. This radio also comes with a flat dashboard mount. It has 3M double-sided tape, and you can stick it to your car. The mount has some holes, too, if you want to screw it in place. Some people install double-din navigation systems down by the floor in these first-gen RAV4s. Up here is much better because I don't have to take my eyes off the road. In this car, the installation looks a lot cleaner. I ran only the power cable down to the cigarette lighter outlet. Right now, the music is playing through the built-in speaker, not my car stereo. Now let's connect the radio using the FM transmitter. Looks like 89.9 MHz doesn't have a radio station. When the radio is connected, the static noise gets quieter. Okay, that works, but there's still a lot of noise mixed in with the music. Let's switch the radio frequency. 95.1 still has static, but it's a lot quieter than the other one. When I tune the car ride unit to 95.1, the noise is almost gone. Even when I turn up the volume, the radio is almost silent there is less interference on this station. That sounds much better. When using the FM transmitter, you'll need to find a good frequency that doesn't already have noise on it. I have a newer Kenwood radio in my RAV4, so it actually has an auxiliary input. A wired connection will always give you the best sound quality. This car doesn't have steering wheel buttons or a touchscreen, so this time I'm adding features and not losing anything. While we're here, let's test out the screen mirroring feature. The phone must be connected through the USB cable for this to work. On the car paride unit, go into the settings, select the phone icon on the left, and switch from iPlay to iOS mirror. On your phone, go into settings, then general. Select AirPlay and Handoff, and make sure it allows AirPlay connection to TVs. Choose Ask or Automatic. Pull down the menu from the upper right corner of the phone, and select Screen Mirroring. Select Car Per Ride AirPlay. If it doesn't connect, unplug the cable and plug it back in. Now the radio is showing the same screen as the phone. With Screen Mirroring, the touch screen doesn't control the phone. You can't click on anything you'll have to do everything on the phone. This is useful if you want to watch a movie on a road trip. For example, you can pull up your favorite YouTube channel and watch car videos full screen, and the audio will go through the car's speakers. Screen mirroring is good for watching movies, but for navigation and music, I prefer using normal Apple CarPlay. Let's go for a drive. The navigation screen is easy to see, and I don't get any glare from the screen. During the day, the background is white. When driving at night, the screen automatically switches to a black background. In split screen mode, I get the map on the left and turn by turn directions on the right side, as well as controls for my music. This is a perfect fit for the RAV4 because it looks good on top of the dash, I can navigate without looking down and away from the road, and it doesn't block my view through the windshield like it did in the Hyundai.
If you want to get this car stereo system, head over to carparide.com and use the code LABCODEPAUL at checkout for 15% off your purchase. It's also available on Amazon. This one is a bit more expensive, but they give you a wireless steering wheel remote. If you've been wanting steering wheel buttons, this is the easiest way to get them. Use the links in the video description to find this portable car stereo, or just search for Car Paride online. They did send me a unit in exchange for making a video, but I told them I wouldn't review it if I thought it was bad. I made a video, so that means it works, and I think it's good enough to recommend to people. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.